Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim along with the coach, and welcome to this week's show as we take a look back at the final regular season game, the victory in the Civil War against Oregon State, and an opportunity to preview game number 12, the Cotton Bowl, we believe, as the Ducks uh, take on uh, Colorado and have a couple of special profiles for you as well. We'll be joined by one of the heroes in the game also later on the set. Well, Coach, congratulations. A great victory, a great way to end the regular season. Uh, it was a war, as you said it would be, in the Civil War, 12 to 10, and Joshua Smith's four field goals were the difference. It was an amazing game. I think Gang Green uh, reinvented itself, so to speak. Josh Smith, the four field goals, was unbelievable. Give credit to Oregon State that they played a great football game, uh, as they always do against this great defense. And uh, I think Tony Graziani really gutted it out in this game. Uh, he wasn't throwing as accurate as he wanted to, but he made some key runs, and obviously rushing for 100 yards in a game is for a non-option quarterback is unbelievable here. It was one of those games you knew going in uh, what was at stake. You knew the importance of the whole scenario. And Oregon State scored first and led 7 to nothing. In fact, led for most of the game. Uh, there had to be a few hairy moments involved as far as your sidelines. Well, <laughs> every game this year has been like that. I'm, you know, I, we find a way to pull it out, find a way to win. I'm very proud of this group of players, not only for what they accomplished for themselves, but for our seniors in their last year and for me in my first year as head coach I think this group of young men has obviously left their mark on Oregon football uh, two consecutive January 1st bowl games we hope or, or New Year's Day bowl games is uh, is an amazing accomplishment and one that uh, I think has elevated us to the level of national prominence that we seek and deserve the option is always difficult to defend but uh, your defense did a remarkable job held Oregon State to less than 200 yards of total offense well below their rushing average uh, other than the one drive that they had after a turnover a 54 yard drive your defense was really outstanding coach waters and his staff did a great job of preparing our players and then the players went out gangrene and executed that assignment football which you have to do when you play an option team and uh, did a great job and the one it, it takes a while to get used to the speed factor I think that's what happened in the first series but after that uh, there was no question they shut him down and I was very happy to put our defense back on the field there were some interesting plays and decisions made during the course of the game one that a lot of people uh, uh, want to know about is you had fourth and about a half a yard to go deep in Oregon State territory uh, with the lead a chance to kick a field goal maybe and pad the lead you went for the fourth down on a play action pass we had four options in my mind. We could have uh, gone for it uh, on fourth and one, either as quarterback sneak or take the tail back over the top. We could have kicked the field goal. We decided to go for everything, go for broke. Um, I, probably my uh, ego overwhelmed my senses. I would have probably wanted to kick the field goal first, and then we couldn't decide on the type of running play we wanted. But uh, I, I'm glad it did not come back to haunt us. And, and obviously, I was trying to show a little bit of confidence in our team that we could get that ball in the end zone. I was tired of field goals, to be honest with you. But now, in retrospect, I might have wanted that one. <laughs> the offense, uh, Tony, as you mentioned, uh, you know, struggled a little bit. The throwing, just you know, one of those just misses here and there. But his scrambling ability might have been the difference in the game. Well, you, when you play a pressure defense, as they are, a lot of times uh, you don't have quite the same amount of time to set up. You get a little excited as the game goes along and you press a little bit. I think they had great coverage sometimes. We were forced out of our routes or the routes were taking a little longer to develop. We didn't have that much time and as a consequence some of those throws uh, weren't perfect. Uh, he made some great throws and great decisions in tucking the ball and running with it and obviously when they were covering so well and pressuring him they left him some great alleys to turn up the field and make significant yardage. Well, in game number one this year, Joshua Smith was uh, back in Colorado Springs uh, watching football games and yet here it is in week 11, he kicks four field goals. Uh, the guy has been remarkable as the season has progressed, and who knows where you'd be without him. He's uh, a great pressure player. He, he really has gotten better every week, and, and I think he does his best job under pressure in game situations. The first day he was out there on the grass, it was a little, a little scary <laughs> because he wasn't very comfortable, very confident with it, but he loves Austin State, loves the turf to kick from, and he's done a great job, and he admits, and he's one of the best pressure players from a kicker standpoint that I've been around. Well, he got the job done against Oregon State, that's for sure. Let's uh, go to the highlights momentarily. First, the Pac-10 scores and the standings as we conclude the regular season. There's only one game remaining. That'll be the Arizona schools playing each other later this week. USC will go to the Rose Bowl, but UCLA for the fifth consecutive year defeats the Trojans, and UCLA earns a bid to the Aloha Bowl. Washington over Washington State. John Wales came back and kicked the game-winning field goal for the Huskies with about a minute to play as they defeat Washington State and apparently go to the Sun Bowl. 
flip the page, California and Stanford. The Cardinal get the win, but the, they're still on the outside looking in at the bowl picture, still have a chance. And Arizona and Arizona State later this week in Tempe. All right, uh, Coach, the standings, USC-Washington tie for the conference championship. Uh, Oregon finishes officially third. You beat Washington, didn't have a chance to play USC. Stanford and Arizona State, and then you flip the page, you see UCLA might finish sixth and go to a bowl game. Arizona, California, Washington State, and Oregon State. Well, you brought out the green pants for the game. You warmed up in the gold pants as we go to the highlights. Uh, tell us some of the thinking on that. Well, the players wanted that. To be honest with you, they felt very good and lucky in those green pants. They hadn't lost a game on the road in them. Uh, they wanted it. Uh, we took the team vote, and it wasn't even close, so I, I allowed them to do it. Uh, we wanted to not showcase it early, though. Here we come out of the hole. Uh, great job by uh, Blake Spence to get us out. He's open. Uh, Tony finds him. Uh, we send Jelks up the middle to get the key first down there. It's really important when you're down there that you get at least one first down. And then uh, Ricky does a little bit of this on his own. Does a nice job, makes some people miss, gets out of bounds on the sideline. Uh, I reminded the kids at halftime, too, there was a reason we wore those green pants. <laughs> and I think they responded, here we get a big play out of Eric Wynn, the T-counter boot uh, that we've run successfully. Also, Graz later on ran the ball several times on this same play or sequence. Uh, here we fake it inside to Ricky. You notice he's tackled immediately, but that's how we get uh, Eric outside. Nice uh, block by Josh Wilcox there, allows for extra yardage. And again, big play to get out of the hole. So a little bit later on in this sequence, third and nine, and a big play for Oregon State. The pass is complete for a first down, but the fumble, and the recovery by Oregon State. Unfortunately, uh, Chris got double teamed there just after he caught the ball, wasn't able to secure it as well, and big turnover for them, and, and they take advantage of it. This is their one sustained drive of the game. Mark Oldford on the pitch. There's a clip there that they don't call. Our, our player, uh, Isaac Clark, was blocked in the back very badly. Their two biggest running plays occurred that way. But again, they took advantage of the momentum here. They get a throw back. We get some pressure. Brian Collins can't get him. They sneak their wing back, back across the field, Cameron Reynolds. Uh, and he's uncovered there, but great recovery by Eric Edwards and, uh, and Rich Rule. So first and 10. Coming inside. They run the dive option outside. Mark Oldford cuts it back in. We were. A little bit of shell shock right at that point. Uh, again, the speed factor and the momo uh, momentum and emotion was all on their side, and the Cameron Reynolds does a nice job on a run, takes it in. We've got to wrap up and, and hold him out of the end zone. I thought we sort of, again, didn't we lacked intensity during that point. Well, that was the only touchdown of the game, as it turns out, and the point after by Randy Lund is good. And we had a piece of that, but couldn't get enough. But it came back later on. Obviously, Brian Jackson got one more later on. We'll talk about it later. So the kickoff, Ricky Whittle, who Adds to his all-purpose record. Rick does a nice job here. Slides inside, and then again, a couple moves. Takes a guy, Reggie Tongue, one of their a great player, great defensive player for them, was involved in a lot of plays, uh, made a lot of key tackles for him. Here he does it again. You see the wedge setting up there. We're bumping outside. Uh, Baldwell there, excuse me, Baldwin, and a great block by Garth White. And then Ricky cuts back uh, and meets Reggie Tongue. <laughs> That happened a few times in this game. Yes. Uh, Graz had to go out after this play here. Yeah, he, he uh, this, we are fortunate again. Uh, Pat, uh, Chris had gone out, Pat had to come in. Jabri Hodge makes, uh, I think that's the second game in the row he's made a, a saving play, uh, getting back one of our fumbles and for positive yardage, which is very important. Graz got hit at the end of this play and, and sustained a cut in the mouth, chin area. Uh, had to come off for one play. R Ryan Perry Smith came in again as he's done several times this year, did a great job for one play. But we're very lucky, very fortunate here. You see the ball bouncing around, and as we've talked about before, football's a game of inches and bounces, and you never know which way it's going to go. It's amazing what that oblong ball will do when it's on the ground. Well, Ryan Perry Smith in, so uh, hey, let's just give it to Ricky Whittle. Give it to Rick, and he does a nice job, draw play, good blocking downfield by Jabri Hodge, and Rick does a lot of this on his own, negotiates. We're trying to use their aggressiveness against them, See good line blocking up front. He's out one-on-one -on -one there, makes Bumpus miss. And then uh, Rick gets off to the races a little bit. Gain of 11 and a first down. First and 10 at the Oregon State 40. We run a little crack screen here, and unfortunately our guard gets hung up on the crack block by the wide receiver. It probably would have been a better play. Uh, came back later with that play, and it did break big. Uh, Kevin Parker in the game now on a load play, inside power play left. 
come back and we hit Chris this time he hangs on get a big first down inside and we're moving the ball pretty well mixing the run in the pass. Gain of 11. See it again nice protection there. Kevin Parker takes the inside guy which uh, we did not do the week before so it, it keeps the pressure off out of Graza's face and we keep the throwing lane open. So on a second down and nine. Run the same play T. Canter boot this time again. They cover the back but that allows Graz to tuck it away and run. And uh, again, keeping them off balance. Nice job here. Good play calling. And uh, you see, as, as he gets outside here, they're covered. We can just tuck it and go. And as I've said many times, Tony Graziani is a, is a much more dangerous runner than people understand. I don't want him to know about it. I don't <laughs> want him to defend it. Uh, just keep it the way it's going. So you have to settle for the field goal. And Smith comes in, booms it through. First points of the day for the Ducks. 7-2-3 with about two minutes to go in the first quarter. Bogged. Great play by Jeremy Asher here. We designed a couple different defenses that we begged, borrowed, and stole from some other people in the conference on how to defend this. And uh, Jeremy does a great job here coming in. We're going to use more backer pressure inside to stop the initial part of the dive or midline option. So at the end of one, Oregon State with the lead 7 2 3. As we pick up the second quarter highlights, Oregon State leading Oregon 7 to 3, but the Ducks have the football and Mount. A nice drive coming up here that will culminate in some more points. I think it was one of our better drives of the day. I think we started to dominate the line of scrimmage. There's Ricky going on his own play over the right guard and uh, just getting tripped up. Uh, Graz on the option coming out early and tucks it and goes. And that speed option has been working well all year. And he's gotten very comfortable running it. Uh, I think we catch them again in sort of a dog situation. And you see great blocking there on the line of scrimmage. Uh, the option back. Uh, comes up to take Ricky and then uh, Graz is one on one with the safety or the corner. So a gain of 16 for Tony first and 10 out of the 49 and then uh, T counter boot again this time actually it's not the boot it's the tackle trap and we give it to Ricky and a uh, nice mix again as I said that you can't defend the run Tony scrambling and the pass off of this and great cut there by Ricky cut back uh, good blocking downfield by Chris McLemore and uh, Nice, nice camera angles. <laughs> Hard to see that thing just going back and forth. And then our, uh, this is what we call our beaver formation, just put in for this game. And uh, I think the first thing we do out of it is our throwback screen to the tight end. Josh does a nice job here coming out using his block and uh, thought he'd almost pull through that. There's just too many there to, and stopped him. It's a gain of 14 and another first down. Yeah, you can see it here. What we're trying to do is not give them a look at the formation very quickly and then we throw back the screen out, away from the sprint out action tossy out in front there uh, comes back off that block there's Eric Reed throwing a block nice job Ricky being smart not coming back and blocking behind the ball carrier but you get a holding penalty that takes you back 11 yards you get 13 on the play but it, it, it kind of stalls the drive yeah unfortunately it's tough you know you get a nice job in the first down we hit the hole and it was two yards deep in the backfield so it made it uh, first and a long ways 22 or whatever we try to come back on third down we go with a, the trap play again the tackle trap and don't get it all so we're we're forced to kick another field goal and Smith who had five consecutive successful kicks going into the game now makes it seven in a row with that successful boot did a nice job again uh, uh, and, and we had great protection great snap and hold that type of thing here we come in and blow up the option early I, I, I don't know if that was Asher Bailey it, you know Des Bird is in there and you just see it boom nice job oh. don't give it a chance to get started and that's the, probably the best way to defend it here again coming up there's Derek Barnes breaking through creating problems with backside pursuit then Eric Jensen Mark Schmidt come up with the tackle but again you can see it we're trying to hit it right in the mouth here early and uh, good penetration by Derek Barnes as I've said and then we're, there's no place for him to cut back so it's a loss of four and then Oregon State uh Nice move here with a yeah. quick kick. They get a uh, fortuitous bounce. Yeah, we uh, it, it didn't get much of a bounce, a little bit more than we wanted. We knew that they have done this several times. In fact, we're calling it out on the sidelines, but there's not a lot you can do at that point. But uh, it gives us very, very good field position. Couldn't move it. The Beavers then get it back. They can't move it. So you get one last drive before the end of the half, trying to capture the lead before the locker room uh, halftime. Here we come. That's the T-counter boot again. And now this time we find Chris McLemore down the field. Uh, they cover. Pump it there by Tony. He comes back. Hits Chris here. Chris tries to make the one move to shake this guy and just gets drugged down by the one leg. But it is a gain of 15. Ball out to the 41. 
quick pass. Again, just trying to milk the clock, get down the field. Uh, hopefully get a score, but if nothing else, get a, a field goal attempt out of this. Browse does a nice job here tucking it going. I think that was a first down, as I remember, so that, uh, again, that stops the clock. First and ten. Shotgun, little screen here. And Chris, again, meets Reggie Tongue. And uh, Reggie, that's a nice tackle. Did a nice job. Gain of only four. Now you've got to start using some timeouts after this catch. Great protection here. Great run to get the ball out of bounds by Josh. Um, and just super protection. Uh, Tony could stand in there and throw. Nice job of stepping up this time. Fourth he and four here. Fourth and four and makes the attempt dive, lunging dive for the first down. Great individual play. Some question by the Beavers on where he went out of bounds. But uh, a lot of time here, and it does a nice job again of keeping his poise, getting out of bounds, stopping the clock. Now there's 39 seconds left in the half. Second and six. Okay, find Josh again. And uh, just does get the first down after the measurement. And after a hold against Oregon State, you get a little better field position, but Matt is only bad boot of the day. Right, unfortunately, the snap was a little bit high. It, it took his timing off and uh, was not successful. When we resume action in the third quarter, the Beavers have the lead 7-6. to six. They also have the football to start the third quarter, but it is three and out thanks to Gang Green. Well, again, we made some, uh, not, not even adjustments, just we got used to the speed factor. Great job there by Derek Barnes and Kenny Wheaton. I'm going to start calling Kenny just the club. You, know, you can see it, sort of watch him out there and see what he does. But great job stringing it out down the line. And again, uh, Derek turns him in and Kenny finishes the job. And again. It, Playing the option is team defense. One person can't do it. You have to have everybody coordinated. Great job here inside. We just plug up the 2A gaps. You can see uh, BJ and, and uh, Asher and Barnes. And I, again, gang green. It's on third down. We'll send the pass, get the pressure on there. And again, nowhere to run. Rule uh, combines for the sack or, or tackle for loss. And again, you can see uh, Paul Jensen coming in there, taking on two blockers. And then uh, B.J. right there and Rule combining for the hit. Their fullbacks only had 33 yards net. And that's a great job. They'd run for over 100 against USC the week before. We, we did a nice job with it. Here, Tony, again, this is a stretch pass play where we uh, fake the stretch one way, come back, have the option of hitting either tight end. I think he actually had Josh here, but uh, felt like he could run it and just stepped up and took off and did a nice job. Did the slide, and he's a former baseball player, slides very well. Uh, didn't appreciate that hit, although the guy didn't really make much contact. But then disaster on a couple of plays later, Ricky loses the football in the pile, and the Oregon State recovers at the 45. Yeah, they, uh, we talked to him about the fact they're going to try to tackle the football. We need to protect it, and uh, unfortunately, they got it out that time. Change of quarterbacks, Tim Alexander in. Tim Alexander's in. There you see uh, Rule greeting him, first tackle situation, do a nice job. Again, they're going to run the, the sweep out. You see a clip right there again on Alex Molden, uh, blocking in the back that they don't call. It happens inside. It's tough to see, but it's a key point in the play. So it's a gain of 18, then the defense settles in. Yeah, great job here. And again, we're in position. Uh, slip the turf tackle there. It helped us, but we like that. And then uh, this is always dangerous, Alexander, but we get great defense there. Brian Collins, uh, Mark Schmidt. And he's dangerous because he's got great speed. He's probably the fastest player on their team. He's a great athlete, but uh, we do a nice job there of just closing it down. So Randy Lund comes in and kicks a 43-yard field goal. That is the longest for Randy on the year. And Oregon State now extends its lead 10 to 6 midway through the third quarter. See, that's the opposing the next home game, Colorado State, next year. <laughs> All right, inside, in midline option, inside option. Again, Alexander tucks it away. And his, his speed factor is different. A couple times we thought we had him, but uh, we, we just didn't. And they get, they get through. We jump off sides here, so they're going to get a free play anyway. It destroys our rhythm, and they get a big game by Cameron Reynolds. And again, the defense comes up big. Alexander flushed, dropped for a loss. Yeah, nice job by Kenny Wheaton finishing that play, getting him out of bounds, making sure he couldn't set up the throw. And a big play here by Kenny Wheaton. That tackle might have saved the game. Crucial tackle because he was off to the races, forced the field goal attempt. And again, this time B.J. gets his whole hand on it, blocks that kick. Big, big play. Obviously, we talk about every... I talked at halftime about the fact that you never know which play may change a game, so we've got to go all out on every single play. 
and certainly this was one of them. And then the smart play is that don't try to go get that ball because right, so we get it back at the point there. And then Tony dropping back the pass, feels uh, no contain on that side, flushes out, tucks it in, and again meets Mr. Tongue. This time I think gets the better of it. He gets some positive yards after the contact, but just a nice job. Uh, the guy takes the inside path there on Willie Rife, who's doing a nice job of protection. Uh, they're blitzing, uh, Bumpus coming from the outside. Tony tucks it away here and does a nice job. Could have gone out of bounds, but saw the opportunity to get some more yards, so he sneaks inside for almost five more yards. 23 yard gain. The drive stalls, and then Josh Bidwell comes in to punt it away. You want to pin him deep, and uh, did just that. He gets a great high kick with the correct trajectory that'll bounce it inside and get nice coverage down the field. The kick worked out very well. Put him down about the five or six yard line. Field position at this point, very important. It will be the rest of the game. Yeah, no question. I mean, we're here. Great job. And again, I, that's gang green. I mean, I see Bryant Jackson down there at the bottom, but it's everybody. Same thing again. We're stopping the dive, and the key to stopping the option is stop the dive because that sets up everything that they do. And if, you, if you're not effective, their fullbacks are their leading ground gators in yards per carry coming into this game. So short gain will force a punt. All right, here we go into the fourth quarter. The Ducks have to come from behind again. They're trailing 10 to 6, but they have the football out around midfield when the quarter begins. First play, we'll play action. Do a nice job. This is that crack screen again that we got hung up before, but Tossi does a great job, super block, and we get some big yardage out of it, which we needed. Uh, we fake the uh, draw down inside the Jelks. We're swinging Ricky on the outside, and Tossi's out there leading him. Great block by Jabri Hodge. Uh, yeah, it's Jabri there, and, and again, Toss gets a piece of Holland, and then Ricky uh, pushes him away, but again, step, gets pushed out of bounds himself. A gain of 18 to the Beaver 34. Okay, and we're trying to take advantage of the play. They were mixing their coverages pretty well. That we Every once in a while, we could throw some of the quick passes and get some positive yards on first down. Uh, get the ball inside to Rick on the tackle trap. It's a gain of four. So it's... Fourth and one, you get the sneak and the first down, but the drive then stalls despite a holding call against Oregon State. And so Joshua Smith in to attempt a 29-yard field goal. And this one is right down the middle. And you have closed it within one, 10 to nine, with 12 minutes remaining in the game. And then a very, very important play in this contest. First down for Oregon State, Alexander to pass, intending it for Cam Reynolds, picked off by Alex Molden. Great job by Alex, and he, he saves our bacon, so to speak. That's our play of the day. You can't see it as much, but if you watch again as it happens here, uh, you can see Jeremy coming. There's our free safety, 29, Isaac Walker, right there at the line of scrimmage. Right there, here, we get great pressure from uh, Troy Bailey and Mark Schmidt, and then the ball's thrown, and again, Alex is playing in between the two receivers, comes up with a big, big play because they'd had us beat, and then Brian Collins helps him on the return here. And again, at that point, I was thinking, cover up that football. Great play and great time for it. So, great field position at the Oregon State 36. Come with the option again. Draws does a nice job getting inside, not allowing himself to be hit. When you only weigh 172 pounds, and I kid him, I'm, he may weigh more than that, but not too much. You don't want to take too many hits, like that one right there, unfortunately. Had Ricky caught that clean, he might have had a chance to run a long, long way. That was a third and four play. Big play, and again, as I said here, Nice little touch. Graz gets hit right in the chin. You can see that. Ricky, thank goodness, stays with that ball. Uh, very, very nice pass. He probably had trouble finding it coming through the line of scrimmage. Come on back. Graz again. Scrambles up inside. And we're forced to kick the field goal, which again, at that point, uh, I believe puts us ahead. Indeed it does. 12 to 10. I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to breathe easy. It's hard even today. <laughs> So there you see it with 9.21 left, 12 to 10. So the Beavers are going to get a couple more shots at this thing. Yeah, again, great pressure here. Uh, this is the one they said, the gangrene, and now the announcer said it was gangrene. That's probably true. I think we had four guys on the tackle. Probably everybody had a shot at him. Uh, Troy Bailey sort of punctuates that uh, some finish to it. Some guys had two shots at yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But we get, again, get it stretched out. We turn it back. Again, Alex is there. Troy's there. Five or six guys he cuts back. Isaac holds him up right there. He almost starts to break out. And then Paul Jensen, uh, Troy again, Dez. Uh, as I said, gangrene. Pick a number. So it's third and seven. And 
again. Nice job here. Great defensive pressure by Alex Molden. Great coverage. Almost tipped it up to the one arm bandit, Kenny Wheaton. I'd like to see him come down with one. Uh, good pressure here again by Jeremy. Right in his face as he throws. And then just a great job. And uh, Kenny running through. So they punt it. And a great opportunity here for uh, Patrick Johnson. Yes, and again, momentum. We get a nice shot. He gets a running start. And off to the races. Again, I got to teach him not to run out of bounds on him. <laughs> but, uh, we just need a 55 yard yeah, wide just field. One more yard there. He'd been able to regain that bounce. Great job blocking there by David Crump playing with a cast on. Eric leading the traffic. Say, come on, come on, here I am. And then uh, he's got to get to the point, and he will, where he can make that cut and keep going. We stall. We get a, a, a great punt at that point uh, out of Josh Bidwell. High one again that is tough to catch, and, and we get the ball there. Uh, Lamont Woods comes up with that recovery and he's down there doing a great job as a duck. He was our special team player of the week last week. And now we've got some momentum. We're coming at him. Uh, we're running the uh, inside power play to Ricky. Come back with a little screen to Josh, same one we had before. Uh, their pursuit gets him, but we get good positive yards. Call a timeout. Here's that fourth and one. Yeah, and again, we had several options here. Uh, and we had the tight end in the back of the end zone, and unfortunately, Blake Spence uh, slips. We had another tight end slipping out. We decided to go for broke and get it all. We wanted to put the game away at that point. It didn't work, and so now we have to hold our breath again and let Gang Green take over. Gain of three there by Alexander. Less than five minutes left in the game. Great job. Again, Jeremy Asher uh, by himself on that one. Had help, but again, we're, we did a great job of those backers stepping up, taking on the heart of their offense, which is their offensive center and two guards and stuffing them, stuffing the dive back. You can see it again right here. There's no place to go. and allows Troy Bailey to come in untouched off the outside. He and Desmond Bird to pinch and, uh, and tackle the dive back. Great job here. Bryant Jackson coming backside. Big sack, big sack. Nice little dance, too. <laughs> he says he's got sore feet, I, I, but I bet they feel OK today. I hope so. So this is third and long, third and 17. And uh, scary moment. Uh, Raheem Muhammad again, nice tackle by Isaac Walker. Uh, he's broken up, broken there, and, and got a lot of yardage back. They buy time, big pass completion, nice catch by them. Great coverage, just nice execution. And our hearts are now in our throats. So it's first and 10, so they get three more downs. But at this point, I don't think they have any more timeouts remaining. So no. this, this really is when they're kind of in a hurry up and. Uh, Without much of a passing offense, really makes it difficult. Right.